What's up guys, welcome to episode 20 of my poker vlog. If you like these kind of videos, please check below and see if you're subscribed. I know a lot of you aren't. It was saying about 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video, that way you won't miss anything. Help me get to that 500 subscriber mark. We're at about 480 and I'd like to make it well over 500 with this video. So today we're gonna be playing a 1-3 session or 1-2 session, I can't remember which, in Springfield, Missouri. Buying in for $300, expect a lot of action. Let's get after it. So first thing we're gonna jump into is the best hand ever created. I've got pocket aces from the button. I go ahead and raise it up to $15 pre-flop after several limpers. Only the big blind under the gun and the cutoff make the call. So we're pretty happy looking to have a huge hand here to kick things off, get going in a great direction. Flop comes down a fairly reasonable one for us. It is king seven deuce with two clubs. I have the ace of clubs, so we're not sad about that. Action checks to me, I bet 40 and everybody folds. So it's a winning hand, but we're not too happy about the way things ended up working out as you want to play a huge hand with aces if given the opportunity, especially on a king high flop. So, oh well. So coming into this hand, we've had some reversals. We've lost a little bit, chipped down to about 280. So I think our high point before then was about 400. So anyway, starting this hand off with about 280. I've got ace of spades, five of spades from under the gun plus one. So I love this hand, definitely looking to do something. I open to 15 over one limper, under the gun, big blind, and the small blind all make the call. So going very multi-way to a flop. The flop comes down king 10 seven with only one spade. So our dreams of flopping a monster are kind of dead. I go ahead and continuation bet for 25 here and the under the gun and big blind players make the call. The turn is the ace of hearts. It checks to me again, and I go ahead and lead out again, this time for 35, and both players fold. So we go ahead and take this one down uh, with our weak ace. I would assume we were like drastically ahead on that turn. So yeah, nothing too crazy. So later on, we look down at queen two suited. We're starting this hand with about $350, and we're in the big blind. So you can kind of see where this is starting to go. Small blind makes it $10 to go after several limpers. I go ahead and call knowing that all these people who limped are probably also going to call for $10 and turns out I'm right. We end up going to the flop. We end up going to the flop four ways. Up comes down queen high with two clubs. So we are in a fantastic spot. We've got top pair and a relatively strong plus draw. Small blind checks. I bet 25 and we end up with two callers. So we're still three handed going to the turn. Turn is a seven of diamonds, so not our favorite card. We'd really like to just go ahead and hit our flush then, but we don't, oh well. I end up leading out for 45 and get one caller. So we're off to see a river, which is the nine of hearts. So we end up breaking out our flush draw, which could be a blessing in disguise. I'm not really sure because I end up leading out for 75 and we get the fold. So we could have been up against a smaller flush draw or a bigger flush draw. Seems very likely we were up against a different flush draw though. And we'd have had to make a big decision without the nuts on the river if they would have like gone crazy with a smaller flush. We'd have likely had to call, but I don't know, could have got scary. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear it or see it, but we've got like birds going crazy in the background. So there's a lot of cawing in the background. Like I'm okay. Like I don't think there's any dead bodies nearby or anything like that. It's just a bunch of crows, question mark? Just losing their minds. So later on, we look down at ace queen offsuit from the hijack. We start the hand with about 450. Three players limp, middle position player makes it 15. I call, and the small blind, who's a very loose, aggressive player, makes it 45. So interesting spot. I could go ahead and put in a four bet, but that seems a little aggressive with ace queen offsuit. So we go ahead and just make the call. Not sure I love this. I kind of think against this player, I should either be raising or folding here because I'm like guaranteed to play a very large pot. Heads up to a flop that comes down king seven seven. So a relatively dry flop and action checks through, which is kind of, you would think kind of weird. You would think he'd want a continuation bet here. Most of the, a lot of the hands that he's in a three bet, but he doesn't. So 
Okay, we will take free card. Free card is a jack, so we turn a... We turn the nut straight draw, which is something, not nothing, but not a whole lot. The uh, crazy player in the small blind makes it 55, and I call. I think this is bad again. I think I either need to raise or fold. Uh, not good. I don't think it's good. River peels off a queen, so we're very happy about that. We now have a pair. Don't really know how comfortable we should be feeling with this second pair on this paired board. Even though we've got second pair top kicker, even though we're against a crazy person, the small blind goes all in for his last $61, and we've got a decision on our hands. Not really sure what I should be doing here, not really sure what hands he can come up with, but I put in so much money at this point, I decide to go ahead and make the call for $61. We flip over our hand, and he snap mucks, and we are ecstatic. I think that I maybe got lucky on the river and beat some sort of middling pocket pair, like jacks or tens or something. I'm not sure, but... Well, not Jax, obviously, who did that set. But we take it down, and we're starting to build a stack. The very next hand, I look down at King Jack offsuit from the cutoff. I start this hand off with about 500, 550, somewhere in that range. There are several limpers in this straddle pot. It gets to me, I decide to make somewhat of a stand and try and steal all these limps and I make it 45, and I somehow get three callers. Yeah, so nobody was having my hole, I'm trying to steal it, nonsense, apparently. Flop comes down, queen, jack, four, so not a terrible flop for us, we do flop middle pair, but we can't feel that great with so many people in here. Action checks to the hijack, who bets 50. I decide to make the call here in position and evaluate uh, future streets. Not really sure if I love my call here, but I don't think I want to be raising, and I don't think I want to be folding, so calling is the only option left. Turn is an ace, so that's a card that's going to be amazing for my range. Like, I can have all, all the good hands. So, ace is great for me. Hijack checks, and I'm feeling fantastic about my ability to take this one away. I go ahead and fire out 75. He doesn't even think about it for very long, and snap folds. So I found a great way to take this one down with third pair in what was a very bloated pot after so much pre-flop limping and then getting three calls to my like massive open. Well, we needed a winning session and thank God we got one. In for 300, out for, I think it was 585. Yeah, that should be right. Out for 585, another win in the books. Played pretty well. We'll go ahead and take it. Stay tuned to the channel, check below, and make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna have lots of videos coming out, going for two videos a week. Been playing a lot, so I will see you guys soon. Have a good one. Don't forget, like and subscribe, comment below what you thought on my play. If you have any questions or concerns, I'm more than happy to get back to you. Just like Brad Owen always says, see you guys next time.